to demand that everyone keep Sunday as a day of observance and all this stuff, and then it's going to follow through and be passed globally. And anybody that's familiar with the scripture will say, well, where'd you get that out of the Bible? Because it's just, I don't see it anywhere. Uh, so I want to walk you through the logic of it. Uh, and I'm telling you ahead of time again that the logic that I can present to you in 40 minutes or whatever it's going to take me, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe 20% of the amount of if, uh, evidence I would have to present to really make it solid, but at least it'll be an, uh, an overview. Okay, so now we're, we're going to start with some review, and we've been talking about some of this stuff in, in uh, Sabbath school as well. And I know sometimes it feels like Adventists, all they talk about is Daniel and Revelation. And hopefully that's not the case for those of you that have been coming here for a while. It doesn't look that way to you, but, you know, sometimes it can, it can look like that. But I think these things are important because there are things that are specific for our generation that probably most previous generations of Christians didn't really have to address so much. Okay, so first I want to give you an overview of the different ways people look at Bible prophecy. Um, if you go from the church to church, denomination to denomination, there's billions of Christians in the world, and they all have different ideas of how to interpret the Bible. So here I'm going to give you a list of different perspectives about prophecy, and, and the first one is people just dismiss it and say, look, prophecy is just some, some nonsense in, a, in an ancient book. Uh, it was a mistake. Somebody thought they knew the future, but they didn't. Uh, or it's, it's, it's far beyond our understanding. Don't even try to understand that it doesn't make sense. So that's one attitude people have. It's a very prevalent attitude. You could go around, talk to people, and they say, no, you know, if you read the Bible, read the Bible, but forget prophecy because it just makes no sense. Okay, that's one thing. Another idea about prophecy is that it was written after the fact. And the reason is because there's certain things, like in the book of Daniel, there's certain predictions that talk about, you know, the, the Greek empire, for example, and, you know, scientists and others today who don't believe in God will say, well, there's no way that people in the time of Daniel, which is three, four hundred years earlier, could have predicted what was going to happen in the time of the Greeks. So it, it obviously was written afterwards. So sometimes they explain it like this. They say, well, you know, the ancient, ancient people had this habit of making up their own history just to encourage themselves. So basically, in the time of the Greeks, the Jews had a really hard time. Um, there's this man named Antiochus Epiphanes. He's one of the Greek uh, uh, kings. He came to Jerusalem. He desecrated the, set of the temple. He took a pig and slaughtered it on the altar and desecrated the temple and persecuted the Jews. So basically, the Jewish people, in order to make themselves feel better, they wrote this sort of... Re uh, they wrote a history and put it back in time, so to speak. They, they made up these prophecies about somebody named Daniel two, three hundred years earlier who predicted that this stuff was going to happen and then eventually uh, the Greeks will collapse and all this stuff. So that's another way that people look at Bible prophecy. It's, it's not a prophecy. It was written after the fact. Other people say, no, prophecy was inspired by God, but it wasn't dealing with actual facts in history, it, it, it was just a set of spiritual lessons. Kind of like when you read, need the, read the Gospels, you read other things, prophecy is supposed to, to just bring you closer to God. It, it's not meant to be factual. It's not meant to be historical. Okay, another group of Christians, and this, this is probably the majority of Christians today, and especially the, at the academic level, they follow a, a method of interpretation called preterism, and what they believe is that the prophecies were written, yes, they really were prophecies, but they were written somewhat earlier in history, like around the time of Daniel, and they were written for the time of the Romans. So in other words, yes, they're genuine prophecies, they were pointing forward to things in the future, but those things already happened 2,000 years ago. They don't apply to us anymore. So it's, 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 a, it's a prophecy that was fulfilled a long time ago. Okay, now this one, futurism, is, is something that is not so much at the academic level in Christianity, but it's very popular among many of the uh, Christian denominations that are even around us today. So probably Baptists, Pentecostals, Methodists, other non-denominationals. Uh, you hear this a lot. It has to do with the secret rapture. They made movies about this some, some years ago, you know, with the... It, it was Yeah, bro, I think I'm losing the 
like I'm losing battery here. <clears throat> okay, so there was a, an author named Tim LaHaye who wrote a series of books and they made movies and they were somewhat popular. And the idea with futurism is that all the stuff in prophecy happens, will happen later. So if there's going to be a, a rapture, all the Christians are going to disappear. Can we, can we change the 